This video is about sinusoidal transformations. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.6. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Part A. Let f of x equal 3 times the cosine of 2x plus 4. What is the midline of the graph for f of x? Given a cosine function with transformations a, b, c, and d, the midline will always be y equals d. So in this case, the midline is y equals 4. It's a vertical translation by 4. Part b. Let g of x equal 4 minus 5 times cosine of x over 3. What is the amplitude of g of x? First of all, having a 4 out in the front like this is the same as having 4 added onto the end. The amplitude comes from the a value, but it is always positive, so you can say that the amplitude is the absolute value of the a value. In this case, the a value is negative 5, so the amplitude is positive 5. Part C. Let h of x equal a times the sine of x plus b be the equation of the graph above. Find a plus b. The a value is closely related to the amplitude, except the amplitude is always positive, and the a value can be negative. The amplitude is the difference between the maximum value and the midline. In this case, two units. That means the a value will either be positive 2 or negative 2. But which is it? Given a sinusoidal function in this form, we know that the phase shift is the opposite of c. But notice that the c value is 0 in this case, so there is no phase shift. That means that one period of the sine function starts right at x equals 0. And we notice that this period of the sine function is sort of right side up. This is the positive version. So a equals positive 2. We know that the midline comes from the number on the end. So this capital B is the midline. So B is equal to negative 1. Therefore, a plus b is 2 plus negative 1, which equals 1. Part D. What is the amplitude of the graph above? First, we draw the midline halfway between the max and min. The amplitude is the difference between the max and the midline, in this case, 3. So, the amplitude is 3. Part E. Let p of x equal 4 times cosine 3x minus pi. What is the midline of the graph for p of x? Given a sinusoidal function in this form, the midline is y equals d. But in this case, the d value is missing. It's 0. So the midline is y equals 0. Part f. Let f of x be the graph above. What is the period of f of x? The period is the length of one cycle of the function. In this case, one cycle has a length of 9, so the period is 9. Part G. Let k of x equal 4 minus 3 times cosine 5x. What is the maximum value of k of x? The maximum value will be the midline plus the amplitude. Having this 4 in the front is the same as adding 4 on the end. This 4 is the midline. The amplitude is the absolute value of the a value, so the amplitude is 3. The maximum value will be the midline plus the amplitude, so the max value is 7. Part h. Let g of x equal 8 times the sine of x over 2 minus 1 plus 6. What is the phase shift of the graph of g of x? Given a sinusoidal function in this form, the phase shift is the opposite of the c value. However, notice that this form has the b value factored outside of parentheses. But right now, g of x 
does not have the B value factored out. So we need to do that. First, a slight rewrite. X divided by two is the same as one half X. Now let's factor the one half outside of parentheses. What number goes here to avoid changing the value of the problem? Half of what is equal to one? This must be a two. Imagine doing the distributive property. Half times X is one half X and one half of two is one. If you did the distributive property, you'd be right back to where you started. So you know this is an equivalent form. With the B value factored out, we can now identify the C value. And the phase shift will always be the opposite of this C value. So the phase shift is two. Part I, let Y equals C times the sine of X over D plus one be the equation of the graph above. Find the value of C times D. We usually write the model for the sine function like this. So don't get confused. This C and D are not the C and D that we are used to. I'm going to do a slight rewrite here and write X over D as one over D times X. Notice that the value that we normally call the C value is missing here. We know that the phase shift is the opposite of this C value. And the fact that there is no number being added or subtracted means that there is no phase shift, or you could say that the phase shift is zero. That means that the period of the function begins at zero. The plus one on the end tells us that the midline of the function is y equals one. And I have traced one period of the function in blue. Since this is the usual sort of right side up version of the sine function, the value in the front, which we normally call the a value, will simply be the amplitude of this function, the distance between the midline and the highest value. We can tell that the amplitude is two. So that's the value of C. We have learned that this B value is given by two pi divided by the period. The period starts at zero and ends at six pi. So the period is six pi. That means that the B value is going to equal two pi divided by six pi. The pi's cancel out and two over six reduces to one over three. But notice that this factor of one over D is in the same position as the B value. In other words, one over D is equal to the B value. But that means that one over D is equal to one over three. But that means that D is equal to three if we take the reciprocal of both sides. We were asked to find C times D. That's going to be two times three, which is six. So that's it for part I. Part J, let F of X be the cosine graph shown above. Find the value of A times B. The fact that there is a cosine graph on this axis doesn't seem to make a difference. All that matters is that pi is here and that this mark is halfway. So this should be pi over two. So that tells us that capital A is equal to two. This mark is halfway to the pi over A mark. So if this is pi over two, then this position should be half of that, which is pi over four. Therefore, the B value must be four. We are being asked to find A times B. That's two times four, which is eight. So that's it for part J. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. 
or you can click the lower link which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.